Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about hepatitis B virus. So hepatitis B virus, firstly we will discuss about the modes of transmission, then we will go to the structure of the virus and then the lab diagnosis. So going to firstly the modes of transmission. So this uh, virus can spread, spread to any bodily secretion. However, the modes of transmission will vary according to the prevalence of the disease. So in high prevalence regions, the more main mode of transmission is perinatal transmission that is from the mother to the child. So this uh, is the most uh, common mode of transmission in high prevalence region. However, in intermediate prevalence region, horizontal transmission that is uh, between the children via they are, when they are playing through minor cuts and breaks in the skin or mucous membrane, this is the main uh, mode of transmission in the intermediate prevalence areas. However, in low prevalence areas, like many developed nations, the main mode of transmission is unprotected sexual activity, intravenous drug abuse. So these are the main mode of transmission over there. There is one more mode of transmission that is by the blood transfusion. However, the rate is uh, very reduced because of the rapid screening and uh, because of this the mode of transmission because of blood transf uh, transfusion is reduced. Now going to the disease spectrum. So hepatitis B virus it usually causes a very subclinical disease but can lead to also hepatic failure chronic liver disease. So you can see acute infection can le uh, lead to acute hepatitis. Mostly it leads to very subclinical disease in which there are no symptoms. In some patients it can cause jaundice. However, these patients mostly they recover. Okay. However, few patients can lead into chronic hepatitis. So these chronic hepatitis patients in which there is chronic disease, it, uh, it can uh, lead to a very healthy carrier state in which there are no symptoms and recovery can also take place. In very few patients, cirrhosis can occur, okay? And also uh, in these patients, in uh, these cirrhosis patients, only around 6 to 15 percent of the patient can go into hepatocellular carcinoma. Now, uh, this was about the acute hepatitis and the chronic hepatitis. There is one more category which is very rare, that is, uh, it occurs in less than 0.5% of the patient, there is fulminate hepatitis. This is the type of hepatic failure in which there is hepatic necrosis and has a very poor prognosis. So this is the disease spectrum. So what is the disease spectrum? Once again, it is a uh, patient can, has, uh, can have acute hepatitis with recovery and clearance of the virus. Patient can have non-progressive chronic hepatitis Patient can have chronic disease in ending in cirrhosis and can also land up in cancer. A very rarely fulminant hepatitis with massive liver necrosis and a very uh, majority of the patient have asymptomatic stage. Now going to the structure of the virus. Now this virus is a double stranded DNA virus. The total uh, this virus is also known as Dane particle and has a size of around 42 nanometers. In this, there is a surface envelope, then there is a core region, okay? There is a core region and there is a surface envelope. This core region is around 28 nanometers. Okay, now going to the uh, structure in this pictorial dis uh, description, you can see this is the surface part, okay? This is known as the hepatitis B S antigen okay this is the core part which comprises of HBE antigen this green part this is the HBE antigen then there is HBC antigen this is the core area then there is double stranded DNA and DNA polymerase so the core region comprises of HBE antigen HBC antigen the double stranded DNA and the DNA polymerase and there is, then there is an envelope which is known as HBS antigen. Now going to the uh, HBS antigen. HBS antigen also has further many components. Okay. 
uh, we will not discuss that but you should remember that whenever there is infection the infected hepatocytes they secrete they synthesize massive quantities of hbs antigen and this hbs antigen can be detected in the blood also there is polymerase enzyme which is responsible for the dna polymerase activity and reverse transcriptase activity then there is also a protein known as hbx protein okay now this protein is important because it is being implicated in the pathogenesis of liver cancer so in liver cancer uh, in case of hepatitis b uh, this protein hbx protein has a role to play now going to the lab diagnosis now in lab diagnosis uh, firstly we will discuss about acute hepatitis then we will go to the chronic hepatitis this is a very important uh, concept to understand in acute hepatitis firstly a very important uh, first antigen to rise is hbs antigen okay the surface antigen rises first followed by hbe antigen and hbv dna okay these are the hbs antigen is the first to rise however the first antibody to rise is igm anti hbc antibody and second antibody to rise is anti hbe antibody and final antibody which rises is anti hbs antibody so uh, how this hap uh, let's uh, discuss in more detail first anti antigen to rise is hbs antigen it mostly appears before the onset of symptoms and peaks during the overt disease and then declines to undetectable levels in 3 to 6 months now antibody to this antigen that is anti hbs antigen is anti uh, hbs antibody this does not rise till the acute disease is over okay when this antibody is present that means the disease has been resolved completely so uh, anti hbs anti antibody will rise only after disappearance of anti hbs antigen and when the disease is been resolved also in case of vaccination only antibody which we will find in the blood stream of the patient is anti hbs antibody Be uh, in case of vaccination we provide with non infectious type of anti hbs antigen therefore only anti hbs uh, antibody is seen Uh, going uh, to the other antigen which rises uh, just after the anti hbs an uh, antigen are anti hbe hbv dna dna polymerase going uh, going to the uh, hbc antigen so this anti uh, this antigen is important because this uh, antigen is the only antigen which is not found in the serum this antigen is only found in the hepatocyte nuclei however it indicates a active replication of the virus and indicates that patient is infected and antibody to this antigen is known as i uh, anti hbc antibodies so antibodies can be of two types it can be igm antibodies and igg antibodies so as you uh, may be knowing that igm antibodies always denote a acute infection okay acute uh, infection is uh, igm and chronic infection antibody is igg so firstly the body will produce igm variant of anti hbc antibody and then they will produce anti i uh, that is igg variant of anti hbc antigen so going to again this diagram we will understand now this is the acute infection so first antigen to rise is anti hb uh, first antigen to rise is hbs antigen then hbv dna hbe anti uh, antigen will rise first antibody to rise is igm variant of anti hbc antigen followed by the igg variant okay whenever uh, the disease enters into a chronic phase or there is a long life lasting disease the, the uh, antigen which uh, the antibody which will rise is igg variant second antibody will be anti hbe it doesn't have much of a role then there is anti hbs antigen that means the disease has been resolved this is the case of acute infection 
going to the chronic infection now in this in this we can see that the antigen the hbs antigen is rising and then it's dropping okay because it's acute infection how However, in case of chronic infection, now going to the chronic infection, chronic infection, by chronic infection, you mean that the anti -H, uh, the HBS antigen is present in the bloodstream for more than six months. So, if the HBS antigen, you can see the HBV DNA and HBE antigen, these all, these all are present in the bloodstream for more than six months, that means the patient is in chronic disease. So, in this uh, patient, the HBS antigen, they will not uh, drop. Then, there will be no anti-HBS antibody. You can see there is no anti-HBS, there is anti-HBS antibody over here. But there it is, there is no anti-HBS antibody because the patient is not immune to this disease. The patient is al uh, already in the chronic state. However, we will find AGM anti-HBC uh, also and we will find IgG variant also. So this is all about the chronic and acute lab diagnosis of the chronic of uh, the hepatitis B virus. So uh, just uh, let's see various scenarios. So if the patient is negative for hepatitis B, patient will not have anti uh, will not have HBS antigen will not have Antibodies to HBC and, uh, antigen will not, not have antibodies to HBS antigen. Okay. In case of early disease, patient will be only positive for HBS antigen. If there is acute disease, patient will be positive for HBS antigen and patient will have IgM variant of HBC antibodies. If this is a chronic disease, patient will mostly have IgG. Uh, variety of the HBS and HBC antibody. Now going to the resolving type. Patient is resolving from the disease. Patient will have decline of HBS antigen. Patient will not have a, uh, HBS antibody but patient will have this variant. Patient will have HBC antibodies. If the disease is resolved, so patient will not have this antigen and will have both of these antibodies. In case of vaccination, uh, vaccination patient will not have HBS antigen, patient will not have anti, uh, anti HBC antibodies, but patient will have only anti HBS antibodies. So, this is the way by which we will diagnose a patient of hepatitis B. We will discuss about the gross and the microscopic features in case of hepatitis B in next video and other viruses also in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. Do like, share and subscribe if you like these videos. Thank you.